This is the NeoBooks call on Monday, October 23rd, 2023, and we were just talking about Swiftonomics and uh, the phenomenon that is Taylor Swift, but we have a, a NeoBook to catch up on. Uh, and if we do so briefly, that's okay too. Um, Stuart, uh, do you have any new thoughts uh, since you've had some time to ponder and uh, reflect? Yeah, I mean, um, my, my only thought is that um, let's get, you know, I want to get this book out. Um, you know, I don't have any, any, any particular, um, details about how or what, or, you know, um, and, and what we ought to do with it exactly. Um, but it's a, it's kind of a representation of my life's work. And I, and I guess the other thought that I, that I had was, um, you know, reflecting a little bit on the, on the, um, uh, you know, on the Israeli war, you know, I hate to use this word, um, it used to be one of my favorite words, you know, trumping, trumping the Ukraine war. Um, um, it's time to be an activist for peace. Mm -hmm. Really, as a, as a, as a, as a critical phenomenon. I mean, the phrase, you know, which is often bandied about, you know, why can't we all get along? Um, it just, you know, humanity is just being so stupid, you know? Yep. And so maybe I've got something that'll grab people and, and, and maybe not, but um, that's where I want my head to be and, 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 and the work I do to be. And, you know, maybe this'll grab some people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, April pointed out to me that uh, David Brooks uh, is just publishing right now a new book. He's kind of um, gone deeply into like how humans and society work. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like it might be an interesting feeder for you or something to go look at. I'll put a a link to the title in the chat. Uh, but this is brand new. And a couple of weeks ago, here he spoke here in Portland, and I went to see him. April couldn't make it, uh, but I went to to listen in, and he was really interesting. He's he was raised in the opposite kind of Jewish household to the one many people think of as boisterous or or hugging and lots of you know whatever. He was like we were like be Jewish but act British, uh, totally repressed, and he spent his whole career trying to like unlock himself and figure out how community works and all these other things. And it's very interesting watching him explore these things out loud in public. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a really interesting guy. Um, his authenticity is, you know, there it is on his sleeve in terms of his capacity for self-reflection. And, um, you know, especially coming from someone who held himself out as reasonably conservative for right. uh, many, many, um, years and i i read I, re I i don't know if it was a review of the book or um a recent column of his but i did read something of his while i was while i was away and was impressed by that mm -hmm. yeah um in related news i have three volunteers to scan klaus's book uh, to basically give it a, not a deep read and not a line edit, but just a, hey, what's, what's going to make this uh, uh, an actual book? And so we're in conversation. I, I don't know that any of them can make this call. I was hoping they might, uh, but that that's kind of in progress. So we may want, uh, Stuart, do you want some readers for your draft or where, where are you uh, in, this, yeah, in, the, in the path? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've had some readers of, not probably the current version, but I've had some things, you know, in the past for some of my musings, um, and um, and I've gotten some positive feedback. But as it as it in its current configuration, um, I'd love some thoughts. Any um, thoughts? Mm -hmm. Good, and probably a good idea there is for you to point me to your favorite version they should look at, and I can put that in front of the people who volunteered so far. Let's see if they want to want to give it a look as well. It's up on the Google. It's up on the Google Drive. That's the that's the one, that's the one, Jerry. And my, one. my my apologies. I'm in process of um, getting a new computer. My computer. It, 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 the short the short story is 
um, one of the techs at Apple kind of talked me into wiping it completely clean, um, which, which since I use Out, Outlook for Mac, I have all of my emails and all of my files are in the cloud. So I really have didn't lose anything critical except that I use the Outlook calendar as a tickler file for day-to-day -day meetings and, and shit like that. And that's why I had to ask you for the, the link this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I just I just pasted a link that I think is my most recent version of your manuscript, but I want to make sure. If you can compare the URL or something. And so you're still on your recently scrubbed but not replaced computer is what you're saying. Yeah, the battery is a little screwed up. It's really funny. I, I went to the Apple store yesterday and the tech, you know, put my 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 MacBook Pro on the counter and said, Wow, this is wobbly. Your your computer is is swollen in some way. I said, so what does that mean tech technologically? She said, Well, you know, it probably is not not operating efficiently and they they told me i need you know i need a new battery um and i'll tell you two tech folks the, the short story so i went online and there appears to be um they've upgraded macbook pros from 13 15 inch to 14 16 but they're still selling a a 13 inch with um an m2 processor whatever that whatever that means, which is probably more than good enough for me. My machine itself is eight years old. Um, so rather than, you know, spend money on a battery, I'd rather um, invest, you know, X number of additional dollars and get a new machine. Um, small things, Pete probably knows a lot more than I do. Uh, at some point a couple of years ago on my previous Mac, uh, it wasn't shutting properly and I didn't think very much of it, but there was like a quarter inch gap uh, it just wasn't closing and like a guy sitting next to me goes oh your battery is swollen you need to like hurry up and get to, get to the <laughs> apple store because it could be it could actually be dangerous yeah and then yeah. and they swapped they swapped in a new battery and they changed the keyboard because i had worn the keys off yeah, just that's part of it so hard. yeah that's what they said to me it's part of the and yeah. that worked well except with such an old machine it then got really slow for me the slowness showed up on the brain not in word processing. And if what you're doing mostly is word processing and you're not editing videos, you don't necessarily need processor speed because the M2 is a fantastic, beautiful, magical device. Yeah, that's so that's 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 what I'm gonna do. And rather than go to a um, you know, a 14, which is like two thousand dollars, the M the, the 13 inch with an M2 is it starts at like a thousand dollars, which is seven hundred bucks more than a new battery. So it just seems stupid not to do any not to do anything else yeah you'll be happy you'll be happy yeah. with a new one like that yeah sorry and i have a um uh, a quote rube goldberg rigged um docking station you know where i'm talking to you from with a with a large monitor excellent it, do, you, do you have to like do you have to like put toast in the toaster to start the rube goldberg contraption <laughs> No, no. <laughs> That's good. My, my dad used to draw, like he would, would invent and draw Rube Goldberg contraptions to do something silly, <laughs> silly like, like, like hang a napkin on a diner's neck or something like that, right? Yeah, it sounds like you, it sounds like great fun. <laughs> um, so... One of the things that's in front of us, and a re good reason to talk to Pete because he's here, is that um, when we are happy with manuscripts from you and Klaus and maybe me, uh, although the thing I'm about to describe isn't necessary for me because I'm writing in chunks, is to nuggetize your books, uh, to go through the neo books process. Uh, and uh, Pete, your feedback is uh, like really useful here because this seems like a, like a, a long digression uh, or an excursion to do something that could be done straight from Google Docs, uh, straight into an export uh, to be an EPUB. But a piece of the NeoBooks project is to have nuggets that live as separate pieces. And if you're doing a piece about how we might be in relationship and, and about how to solve uh, conflict and all that, the nuggets might be extremely useful as wiki pages, roughly, that live in community and are changeable and, and uh, updatable. So that's the reason to break up a large manuscript into nuggets. Um, so that would kind of be next. Yeah. Um, 
Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, um, three nuggets uh, in the book. I mean, three three nuggets, <clears throat> three broad nuggets. One. Three, yeah, three big ones and a bunch of sub sub nuggets. Sub nuggets. Yes. I haven't mm -hmm. that one yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete, thoughts about process things, anything around that? By the way, uh, just Pete, before you jump in, um, I actually talked to a few people about, um, you know, what we did um, with um, with Klaus's book, with chat GPT, um, because I thought it was just so beautiful, you know, how we used it and what 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 the what the response was. Mm -hmm. Any feedback? Did they? Yeah, everybody thought it was wow. That's really interesting as a use of you know Chat GPT. And these were this was a bunch of um, educators, um, educational leaders, mm -hmm. um, K one through twelve at a at a DEIB conference in um, in Nairobi that has the most extraordinarily beautiful um, English speaking school. Hmm. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, language, uh, conversational and, and writing engines like ChatGPT are, are going to be increasingly important. Um, uh, and also frustrating when they get used poorly. Um, so I think that's going to happen a lot. And then a lot of, I think there's going to be some, you know, there, there'll be some backlash um, because of that. I, another, another interesting data point is a erudite reader um, that looked over what Klaus has got so far is like, wow, this ChatGPT stuff. And this is somebody who really loves ChatGPT. This ChatGPT language is, is hash, it's junk. Um, it's, it's really poorly written. Um, uh, and I've, I've talked to a few people about, about I, I think I know what that person means because ChatGPT will just write stuff and it writes pretty good stuff. It's not, and what it does is actually magical. It feels magical almost every time I'm using it, but um, it's also not, um, I, I, I guess in my use of ChatGPT, I've noticed that you want to rewrite a lot of what it says. So it's, it's great for ideating it's great for expanding your vision it's it's great for even coming up with turns of phrases that you wouldn't have come up with and mm -hmm. maybe the output isn't um isn't exactly the one i i kind of wonder I, I i wonder um maybe Klaus just wasn't you know sensitive enough uh ear wise or actually i think he got so much out of it and it was doing such an amazing job and that he accomplished something that he could not have otherwise there's another step there too, which is to go, okay, now I've got these ideas out and they're written a certain way and maybe I need to, to finish that a little bit. I don't know if that's finishing by hand. Um, I think, I know when I write stuff in concert with ChatGPT, uh, I talked to Jordan Sukut actually, the same thing. He does a lot of writing with ChatGPT, but you write with ChatGPT or you, you, know, you let it write a chunk and you go, okay, well, I like this part and this part. Can you rephrase these things, or how would you, you know, change the way that that's set up? So it's it's like a writing assistant, and it's a really good one. I don't think it's quite a writer yet of finished finished stuff. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess also that um, it depends upon whether you're a writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, if you're if you're not a writer, you're very very happy to accept what it puts out. If yeah. you're writer and you yeah. enjoy the process of the iteration of writing um then it doesn't bother you to use that as a as a as a starting point and you're happy to... I, that's a that's a great observation i think also there's a there's another thing it's if if you're an editor or a publisher you know it's it's taken some particular editorial path or you know non-editorial path i mean it's just making stuff up kind of which you might or might not be happy with, and you might want to get more into the. Um, to go back to nuggets, 
Um, all, and also to mix in something else, Jerry, we had a, a short discussion with Bentley um, on Mattermost about his idea, um, which I ended up saying, it, it's a, he, was, he wanted to talk about, in the context of taking care of an aged parent, uh, he, he wanted to talk about how you keep your, yourself or, or your, your loved ones healthy and the whole process of that, you know, which is a big kettle of fish. Um, he said, I, you know, this, I, is this a new book? And I ended up saying back to him, it sounds to me like a reference wiki, a re reference encyclopedia and a set of neo books. And I, I think there's, so I, th I think there's something to that. I, I think maybe there's a larger information system that neo books have a big chunk of but aren't the complete thing i think you want a reference encyclopedia um i think at the other complete other end of it maybe you want a chat system with the author or or the text itself now you can do a chat with the text itself with a bot um so maybe and maybe neobooks is some wedge of that but around the neobook idea and interleaved with that nugget idea there's probably other other chunks, I think. I love that idea, Pete, of of, of interaction with the author. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's one thing for others to um, add, annotate, what have you, but the idea of being able to contact the author is just, I think, it's super. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, and the other readers. Um, mm -hmm. And, and people who, it, it would even be awesome to um, be able to be interactive with skeptics or people with different viewpoints or things like that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's I have a big, a, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that's a big interest of mine. Keep going. Um, uh, I'm inspired to tell a short story, a very short story, um, uh, an experience I had earlier today where we were talking so about, about the farmer and the horse. Um, <laughs> no, the, no, the, farmer the, farmer's horse. Daughter, the farmer's daughter. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and it's not about uh, my, my plumbing adventures either. <laughs> um, uh, thank goodness. Uh, the, um, it's, it, it illuminated something for me that I think we all kind of know, but never, it, it was a bolt of lightning. Like, wow, that's a really big effect. Um, this was in the context of prose fusion, where we're trying to figure out how to have a more capable collaborative writing experience um, using some simple tools, simple uh, tools that um, that come from the programming world. And and so I was talking with uh, one of the essentially one of the students, you know, like okay, so remind me again why we're trying to do this thing because he got roped into it by a, a colleague <laughs> so he, nice. he wasn't the one who was like oh my god i need to learn this prose fusion stuff it was a, another friend of his who's been on writing projects with he said oh my god we've got to learn this collaborative writing stuff and you're going to join me um so the 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 person who was really interested wasn't there so i got to talk directly you know um to uh, somebody who was interested but still wondering okay so why are we doing this and I'm like, okay, so, uh, so in truth, um, you know, if you're one person, you don't need a collaborative writing, you know, ecosystem. If you're like two or three people and you're writing 10,000 words, you know, that's 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 words, Google Docs is actually going to be easier probably than your, you know, than the thing that we're talking about. But if you want to write 20,000 words with 10 people or 100,000 words with, you know, God knows who many, how many people or a million words, um, then Google Docs is going to be really painful really fast. And so what we're aiming to do is to write, you know, like a, a six member team writing 100,000 words, 200,000 words, 500,000 words. That's kind of where we're aiming. And my my um, my assertion is that the techniques we've we've kind of assembled um, won't like it will easily scale to that that level of complexity without any problem. 
um, unlike Google Docs. So, so then we talked a little bit about, so are we, do we have a, a project that big that we wanna do? Um, and the answer is no. Do we have a team of people that need to do that project but didn't know how to do it yet? And it's like, well, no. <laughs> um, so what we identified was kind of a chicken and egg situation where the thing I'm thinking that we can do together has never really been something that you would consider to be possible. So, you know, it's like, um, I mean, it's been done, you know, the OED or Encyclopedia Britannica, or um, I, I think there was even some dictionary that was like some massive thing that was, you know, but normal people wouldn't go, I want to be on an eight person team writing half a million words, you know, um, this, this year. And because that's like, and I'm like, you know, okay, I've got Microsoft Word, I've got Notepad, I've got Google Docs. None of those are going to be able to do that thing. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't see a way to do that. So I can't even think of doing it. And similarly, because there isn't a project like that, we don't have a bunch of writers who sit around going, you know, um, I don't know what the project is, but I know that I want to be part of that, that kind of team. And so it occurs to me, the reason I'm telling this story is it occurs to me that NeoBooks is probably kind of hunting around um, with the vision of something that it could do that's going to be different than anything we can imagine. And that that thing that you can't imagine and you can't even describe and, and you don't have people to do it with because there isn't such a thing in the world already is kind of where NeoBooks is at too. Um, thanks, Pete. Sort of to paraphrase what you were saying, just to see if I'm understanding it properly, um, the things you're considering writing don't rise to the complexity of needing more complicated tools than Google Docs, let's say. So why, why? And that fits really nicely with like the project uh, that uh, Bentley was talking about on uh, Mattermost. And also I think Stuart that you're trying to do with your book, which is that there's a body of research insight and knowledge that should exist in the world that some, some pieces of which could be manifest as books, but which are more broadly useful and which could easily turn into a large-ish project of great complexity if only the medium lent itself to that. But instead, the conventional mainstream media world we have spits out books which are inert and don't connect to audience to con contributors, audiences, or potential other authors. Right, that whole thing. And just to add, just to add to that, Jerry, um, and the books that that mainstream media, the inert books, are spitting out. Um, Sorry, April. Nobody reads them. <laughs> no, very few. The, 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 the president of Barrett Kohler knows this as a result of research. He publishes this thing every year: the ten awful truths about, you know, the publishing world. But the statistic is amazing about how many people buy books and never read them, or you know, read the first couple of pages. I mean, it's just it's awful. You know, it's awful. So, and so if you compare. Actually, we're actually kind of inventing what I what I think is a, a much more utile vehicle. Mm -hmm. If you compare the viewership of a Sam Harris podcast with a best-selling book, like the mind boggles. And then if you go compare those numbers to how many viewers are watching CBS News, evening news these days, right? Then there's still this incredible disequilibrium, like, like people using... Uh, new media are their numbers are just through the roof. And then April and I wound up talking about Taylor Swift a while last night, but also Mr. Beast and a couple other phenomena. And, and I'm like, have you seen what Mr. Beast is doing on YouTube? And April wasn't really aware of him, but but he's a phenomenon. He basically create he intentionally creates a massive audience, tells the audience, the more eyeballs we get on this, the more money flows into this game that I'm playing with you, which is about sweepstakes and stupid contests and sometimes meaningful stuff. There's a really nice video of him donating a thousand eye surgeries, cataract surgeries, um, which are inexpensive to do, et cetera, and, and restore sight, right? And, and in the video, this is a little bit of a plot spoiler, in the video, he occasionally shows up to a patient who's just had their eyesight restored, who is already very perfectly happy and opens a briefcase and says, here's $10,000 for you. And 
there's this very, very interesting, massive audience thing going on around that. And somewhere in the mid space of a book that 10,000 people read and this crazy media sweepstakes thing, there's got to be a fruitful experimentation, investigation, and co-creation of useful media that make the world better. No? And I think that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah. What else should we talk about here and now with the three of us? Hey, did did you did you? I feel like I I kind of talked at your question, but maybe not answered it. And did you were you wondering specifically about publishing stuff, or um, I was sort of looking down the road a little bit and thinking like what what we're going to need next in, in order to think about it myself, queue it up get get the ball rolling rolling lightly that's all i was doing um but, but but then we went on this digression about why the hell bother doing all that stuff which was really useful so yeah i'm grateful we, for that we, we talked kind of about nuggets and stuff too i guess yep um i i think it's really important that people use tools that they're they're fluent with um so um, and then at the other end of it, at the meat grinding end, um, you, you do actually want to start talking about file formats and publication mechanisms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. So I just had this, you know, little brain fart about, you know, co-opting the traditional publishing industry <laughs> in terms of, in terms of real, you real utility, real collaborative utility in, in, in the world today. When I, and it was interesting, um, I think it was 2008, I co-authored a book called Collaboration 2.0 um, with, um, <laughs> with, 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 with David Coleman. And there were some folks from, from Silicon Valley talking about, you know, making it a living book because they thought it was important enough to do that. Um, um, and it never happened, you know, partly because my collaborative partner was a really difficult guy. <laughs> and that's all, that's all, that's all I'll say, who I, I didn't really want to work with anymore at all. This is um, getting to resolution? No, this is a book no. called Collaboration 2.0. Oh, right. Gotcha. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so let's let that percolate in each of our heads because I think, I think if we take more seriously the idea that we're doing something to upend traditional publishing models and create some new way of communicating through wisdom. Um, I think new ideas will show up for us. And, you know, maybe we should, probably not, but maybe we should approach Steve Piercenti, uh, basically the senior editor at, at Barrett Kaler, and say, hey, Steve, would you be interested in an experiment? And I, I think that going to a publisher and asking that question is probably like a suicide mission. It's not good. But, but he might actually be like, hmm, I've been thinking about this and how might this work? So um, I'm still in touch and friendly with Pete, with him, you know, whenever I want, I have access, but, but also to some people on the board and um, the, the short response is, um, <laughs> if they could find some other vehicles. Um, at they would try point, them? I, I think that they would. Um, That's interesting. As long as there is some um, revenue model attached to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because um, they had a great run, but um, publishing is a tough business if you're in it to make money. Mm -hmm. It's so weird because here's Taylor Swift publishing and minting money, and here's Mr. Beast publishing. Yeah, there's a lot, tons of media comes out of his shop, tons, tons of highly polished now. Like he, oh. One of the really interesting things about Mr. Beast is that he hacked everything he could learn about how to get an audience on YouTube. 
he he basically went in and did a b testing he <clears throat> listened to everybody's videos he watched and critiqued he just kept iterating and testing iterating and testing until he cracked the code so his videos would, would go viral and it paid off like enormously but a lot of his early work was just how to hack the algorithms which i'm not suggesting we try to do but that's how he broke through to build his weird new and different model so yeah which, so, which and the the um the breakout successes the um the one end of the bell curve doesn't mean that it's easy to publish <clears throat> in music also, or on youtube yeah. or... no it also doesn't doesn't mean that there are going to be many mr beasts so that there might be that much room at the top of the curve <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but is there is there a is there a mesa or a plateau next to them that is comfortable? Because the amount of money both of those individuals are moving around is boggling, like like yeah. seriously boggling. Yeah. The amount of money a human needs to be happy having made a living and maybe having published a book, because authors these days don't make money from publishing books; they make money from other things the book may may cause for them. Right. Yeah. April's business model is not to make a living from the book; it's to make a living consulting on and speaking on what the book says. Yeah, book is a biz, is a big business card. Is yep. what it is. Business card brochure, however you want to hold. The sad, sad demotion, is it not? Yep, it is. It's like it being is. field field trip of your rank, which apparently doesn't happen that often. Yeah, but there and are yeah. a couple of famous famous ones. Right, but you do it as a labor of love. I mean, I remember, you know writing and saying, I don't care if this ever gets published. I'm learning so much in, 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 in getting it out and getting it down and refining language and clarifying thinking. Um, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, Pete, I learned another uh, shortcut for the Sonoma video things, which is, this is the way to get, oh, come on. Yeah. Nice. The laser light show effect. <laughs> and uh, Stuart, so I, don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen all these, but this is when, when, when you get your new machine, uh, you will also probably get, because they will install it on all the new machines, you'll get uh, Mac OS 13, whatever, which is Sonoma. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. If you do a hard, yeah, if, if I do a hard, Sonoma is busy watching the screen and will do, it won't do it for you because it's not a Zoom feature, no, it's, it's, not. A, it's a Mac OS feature. Right, but mm -hmm. whenever you buy your computer, you will get these things bundled in because all of a sudden, <laughs> like I didn't have to turn it on, like I I ran the OS upgrade and suddenly got these new new play toys. So, <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> anything else you want to talk about here, or shall we wrap our call a little bit early? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we're good. No, I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for jumping on the call. At, uh, Really, really glad to see you and, and hear from your adventures and all that. Oh, and and um, the, the other thing, the only thing that, that I didn't mention in um, in my check-in was meditating with the animals on 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 safari. I was just kind of blown away by how close these guides took you to you know dangerous beasts, to leopards and lions, and you're you you know you're five yards away. And they're trying to. And get it's not like angle. it's not like you're in a cage. You're, it's, you're not in a cage. You're, no, you're, you're in, in a, like a mostly you're in a, open you're vehicle. In a modified like Land Rover, you know, with with eight seats, you know, and and there you are, and there's a lion right there, <laughs> or the elephant is walking behind you. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's very. Cool. I, I've done I've done one day of safari in my life. April and I went to Ngorongoro Crater in uh -huh. Tanzania which was beautiful. It was really like, it's, it's a, an impact crater. I don't think it's a volcanic crater. I forget. Yeah. Um, and you descend the lip and uh -huh. basically any creature born inside there is likely to just live its entire life only inside that crater. Yeah. Well, really here, here you are um, watching a leopard drag an impala up a tree because if it doesn't drag it up a tree, somebody's going to steal it. And then you've got all of these hyenas, you know, waiting at the base of the tree for scrap. I mean, it's just, just you know, it's it's life, it's nature. It's, it's, it's the, the food chain viewed up close and personal. Oh yeah, Abs absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks all.
Enjoy. Thank you. See you around. Okay. More soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.